HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll take you to the annual Hopkinton Drug Holiday Open House. Local veterans during the Vietnam War era were honored and Courtney will let you know all about upcoming programming on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. The Charter Review Committee held their second public forum to review Hopkinton's town charter. Our committee has representatives from the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and the Appropriation Committee, as well as four members of the public, one of whom served on the original Charter Commission. During our for forum, we will be reviewing the proposed changes we are recommending to the Charter, including background and support, and seeking input and or answering questions from residents. The review of the Charter started in January 2016. The Charter was first implemented in 2006. The committee began the process of reviewing the existing Charter in January 2016 with an in-depth review of the existing Charter and a review of comments and recommendations received by Town Hall since the Charter was first implemented in 2006. We investigated charters of 17 benchmark communities, which like Hoppington have charter rule and open town meeting and similar demographics. We also interviewed town boards and committees and department heads within town government to gather input they had rec regarding the charter. In September 2016, we held a public forum to gather input <laughs> from the residents. Our task in the end is to look at all input and feedback and recommend the best possible solution to keep our town's government efficient and effective. A careful review of all this input has led us to the proposed changes we are proposing tonight. Three significant changes presented for consideration included changing the position of town clerk from elected to appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Benefits of keeping the town clerk elected were independence and autonomy, mm -hmm. Voters have direct control over who serves. It guarantees a Hopkinton resident in the position. It's subject to the recall provision of the charter. It is, uh, the town clerk is the face of the town to many residents. Benefits for making the position appointed were, you can match the skill set against requirements. It's part of the salary administration plan. It's subject mm -hmm. to performance management oversight by the board of selectmen. Part of the formal reporting structure can require the town clerk to obtain and retain certifications, can oversee every election as not on the ballot once every three years, likely a larger pool of candidates, and you, there's a potential to have language giving preference to Hopkinton residents for this. Standardizing reporting structure for town employees. We looked at five areas relating to reporting structure, appointment, supervision, goal setting, evaluation, and discipline. After input from all impacted boards and discussion by the committee, we recommend that this reporting structure should be considered for the town planner, the library director, the parks and recreation director, the board of health agent, and the conservation administrator. It should be noted that each board or commission will still have ultimate appointing authority and hiring authority over its town employees, and staff currently employed in these positions will remain in them. The goal setting will happen with the full input from and approval by the board or commission in an open public meeting that will drive the day-to-day -day supervision overseen by the town manager. And streamlining the budget schedule and warrant process. When reviewing the budget process, the committee kept in mind that the town is continuously growing and as of fiscal year ending June 30, 2017, it had an $80 million budget across all aspects of town finances. The 2006 Charter provides specific due dates for deliverables as part of the budget process, which has caused issues at an, as annual town meeting approached with regards to providing information in advance of annual town meeting. 
The same deliverables are still identified and included in the proposed charter. However, no specific dates other than the town manager establishing and issuing a budget schedule with the agreement of the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and the Appropriation Committee no later than October 1st are present. These three committees are the most impacted by the budget schedule and as such need to be included in the establishment of the timeline for deliverables. This allows more flexibility for meeting the ultimate deadline of annual town meeting and the preparation of an annual appropriation committee report 14 days prior to annual town meeting. The annual appropriation committee report shall include recommendations and detailed explanations of all financial articles. View our website hcam.tv to see the rest of the Charter Review Committee second public forum. Vietnam War era veterans were recently honored at the monthly Hopkinton Senior Center Veterans Breakfast. Milford VFW Commander and Chairman of the Vietnam, the 50th Massachusetts Incorporated, Steve Pettick, was the guest speaker and presented any veteran who served during the Vietnam War era a Department of Defense approved lapel pin to commemorate their service. He's also the VFW commander in Milford, and he's here to present <laughs> the DOD lapel pins. Steve, it's yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, something, something I have to get off my chest right now before I even start. Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> I wanted to say that for about three weeks. <laughs> I got it off my chest. Welcome to all of you Vietnam veterans and Vietnam era veterans here today. I want to let you know that what I'm doing today is a privilege and honor for me to do. I am Myself and my committee coincidentally put together the thing up at the DCU. I'm over the head. That's it. Uh, I'm with me today. I have two members here today. One, Earl Fahey and Frankie Earl. They will be, will be coming to your table to present you with the pin after I let you know what you're going to be getting. And uh, we want you to either raise your hand or stand if you can on each table so that we can distribute the pins to you. All right, so I'm gonna let you know now what you're gonna be getting. The United States of America, the Vietnam, Vietnam War Commemoration, excuse me, <laughs> lapel pin. Purpose of the pin, to recognize, thank, and honor the United States military veterans who served during the Vietnam War. Eligibility. Living United States veterans who served on active duty in the United States Armed Forces at any time during the period of November 1st, 1955 <coughs> until May 15th of 1975, <coughs> regardless of the location, if you were in Germany, Italy, I don't care, if you were in the bracket between November and May, you're eligible for the pin. These pins will be presented in a dignified manner for each Vietnam veteran during public events held in their community by com commemorative partners, which we are with partners with the Department of Defense. And you can see the flag behind us. <coughs> and we should thank you for your service and sacrifice. And if there's anybody that you know uh, in a nursing home or anything like that that can't make the event, then we will go out of our way to present one to them in their uh, location. The symbol. When you receive the pin, the eagle on the pin represents honor and dedication to our nation as one of the most recognizable and notable American symbols. It rises with distinction on numerous military insignia. It has a blue circle. The color blue matches the can canton of the American flag and signifies vigilance, perseverance, and justice. <laughs> the circle shape of the blue color also matches the official seal of the commemoration of the Lord of the Service. The law will reap a time-honored symbol representing victory, integrity, and strength. The stripes. The stripes 
behind the eagle represent the American flag. The stars, the six stars represent the six allies who served, sacrificed, and fought alongside one another. Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, the Republic of Korea, Thailand, the United States, and our friends in South Vietnam who fought along with us. The message, the grateful nation thanks and honors you. It's embossed on the back of the uh, pin closest to your heart. So when you put this on, either wear it on the left hand side of your cap or on the left lapel. And now, I'll ask my committee men to venture forward and pass out pen. On behalf of our nation, I am privileged to present to you with this lasting memento of your nation's thanks. The nation, Commonwealth, and all who are here, thank you for your dedicated service and the personal sacrifice both of you and your family for all of us during the Vietnam Thank you War. Very much. You're very welcome. For this, I salute you all. Please wear it proudly. Um, waited 51 years to get some kind of recognition from the United States. And this is our recognition. Thank you very much. It was great to view some of the many heroes in our nation receive recognition for keeping our country safe. Thank you to all who served and serve today. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to the Hopkinton Drug Holiday Open House. And Courtney will get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi. My name is Margie Wiggin, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HCAM News. The first weekend in December was a weekend of holiday spirit throughout Hopkinton. Hopkinton Drug took part in the festivities as they hosted their annual holiday open house. But do you recall the most famous reindeer? Hopkinton Drug hosted their annual open house. The event featured activities for the kids. Hi, we are making kids crafts. Yeah. Uh, ornaments, reindeer, snowflakes, um, Santa, that you can join themselves. <laughs> A visit from Santa Claus. Let's look right there, here we go. All right, Frosty on the three. One, two, three, Frosty! <laughs> Very good. 
and a performance by the New Sound Assembly Barbershop Chorus. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air. What a bright time is the right time to rock the night away. Hopkinton Drug also hosted a raffle with some wonderful gift baskets. All proceeds from the raffle went to benefit Project Just Because. Project Just Because is a charitable organization which helps families in need. Hi, I'm Dennis. I'm, uh, I'm president of Hopkinton Drug and uh, this is our annual open house. We've been doing this I think uh, 29 years now. And uh, we've got uh, Santa, and by, the, by the way, we have a world-famous Santa. I believe he was just signed up for the, uh, who's the Red Sox, if I'm not sure. Red Sox, the Patriots, not sure, but uh, anyways, he's doing that kind of work. Uh, he's very, very good. Uh, we have uh, our caricature people, we have the uh, choirs, uh, we have samples, we have education. Um, it's a nice little community event. How about you? I like that, okay. And you can keep that too, all right? You got Anybody else? No? During the Hopkinton Drug Open House, the New Sound Assembly Barbershop Chorus performed. The a cappella singing group put attendees in the holiday spirit as they performed some of the classics. Here's a look. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature, and heaven and nature, and nature. And who would like a reindeer nose? You guys can keep the reindeer noses. Who would like one? Anybody want one? You can put them on like this. It's real easy. Your parents can help you. See this little thing there? Want to put it on your nose like that? How about you? I like that. Okay. And you can keep that too, all right? You got anybody else? Most famous reindeer of all. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer. Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as he shouted out with glee, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in his story, you'll go down in his story. Two 
ago I thought I'd take a ride Soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side The horse was lean and lame, his fortune seemed his lot He got into a drifted bank and we, we got up Jingle, jingle, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way If you want another look at the Hopkinton Drug Holiday Open House, visit our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of great programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, December 12th at 7 p.m., Daniel Bouchard reads his poetry inspired by a creek on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. The waters were high at Chester, but the receding tide prevented further damage. People stood on the bridges, watching the seething current, while some of them remembered the Great Flood of 1843. At 7.30 p.m., Elmwood School Principal Ann Carver gives a behind-the-scenes glimpse of the goings-on at Elmwood on highlights from the hill. Other children were saying, I have a new baby in my house, or I, um, I just moved to Hopkinton. And so the message for the children is that there are lots that we may look different, we may feel different, we may even behave differently at different times throughout the day, but that all in all, we're more similar than, than not. On Tuesday, December 13th at 6.30 p.m., Mike Prate discusses his time at HCAM on Inside HCAM. The vision that we had, especially you and I in the beginning, this is bigger than the vision I thought we'd ever get to, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I, we were so happy to be out of the thumb of another landlord mm -hmm. to where we'd have a little bit more freedom and it turned out way better than we could have hoped. At 7 p.m., Tom Nappy recounts the Hiller's journey to becoming the 2016 state volleyball champions on a new HCAM News Focus. On Wednesday, December 14th at 7 p.m., Bob Lavoy recalls his time in the Marine Corps, his training, and his experiences in the Battle of Iwo Jima on Veterans Remember. When they raised the flag on Sarabachi, we could see it from the high ground where we were looking back. Mm -hmm. And we heard this roar go up from the rear echelon. And right away, wonder what's going on. Well, it was the flag went up. On Thursday, December 15th at 6.30 p.m., Margie Wigan discusses why being friendly matters on Character Matters. It's good to be friendly because then other people will be friendly back, and I guess I was just always friendly. People, and um, people are friendly are my parents, my brother sometimes, and uh, some of the kids at school. At 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. If you want to find out more about all of our programs, you can visit hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know about the many Hopkinton events taking place, you can sign up for our daily news updates. 
As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view highlights from the Hopkinton Hillers Girls Volleyball State Championship run and also details about the holiday festivities coming up around Hopkinton. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and as always, thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com. Stand.